The flag is up. And they're off. It's affirmed on the outside, sprinting to an early lead. They race very tightly into the clubhouse turn the first quarter, 25 even. Affirmed on the outside has the lead by a neck. Coastal on the inside moves into second by a half length. It's spectacular bit between those two in third, but dropping back a bit. Affirmed once again draws clear by a length. On the inside, it's spectacular bit in second. Coastal is dropping back in third, past the 16th pole. Affirmed on the outside takes this race. Course of the year, affirmed in front. And so affirmed is victorious in this, his last race. The two-time horse of the year wins the 1979 Jockey Club Gold Cup, beating champion three-year-old Spectacular Bid to close one of the greatest racing careers in thoroughbred history. It's a story that had begun more than four years earlier. Patrice and Lewis Wolfson awoke on the morning of February 21st, 1975 to news of a new colt born at their Harborview farm in Florida. His ancestry was filled with great champions, including Raisin Native and the 1937 Triple Crown winner, War Admiral. He was in the field with the other foals, and uh, my husband and I were standing at the fence, and this little chestnut broke his way through the field and, and came over right to the fence, and he had a halter on his, on his neck, and he said, um, and I said, oh, who are you? He was kind of narrow and scrappy looking. He was kind of um, like a little youngster out there. But he nuzzled me. And um, I just, I liked him. I said, yeah, yeah, I like you. The Wolfsons named him Affirmed. And the skinny youngster soon filled out into a handsome two-year-old. Well, I always felt that, that Affirmed gave an illusion of being a, a very small horse, you know. Mm -hmm. But in essence, he was, a, he was a big horse. But his frame didn't develop till he became a four-year-old. And I think he was always so relaxed that he gave that appearance of being small. But it was because he was just so professional and, and so intelligent and, uh, as Eddie Arcaro once called him, the athlete. Belmont Park was chosen as the place for his maiden race. In his first outing, Affirmed led the field every step of the way. I remember he was very frisky looking and uh, very alert. He was looking around and uh, a little high spirited. And he won in fine fashion. In fact, if you look at the main race, you see he's got his mane blowing in the wind. His remarkable debut caught the eye of Wolfson's new trainer. Laz Barrera, born in Cuba, one of nine brothers working in thoroughbred racing, had won the Kentucky Derby the year before with Bold Full. With an eye to the future, he saw in this young chestnut colt the look of greatness. It was Barrera who began assembling the team that would lead a firm to immortality. Patrice Wolfson remembers. I like to think that it was Laz's I and contribution immediately when he cut off the plane that evening from California and looked at the tape of the race as that that he had a, a, a groom that could not handle him he was a little tough at the time and he um, he merely changed grooms and put um, Juan in charge of, a, of affirmed Groom Juan Alaniz would be a firm's friend and companion throughout his racing life, braiding his mane and tail before each race, and sometimes sharing afternoon naps in his stall. Affirmed went on to victory in his second race, but in his third, the Great American Stakes, he confronted a formidable challenger. This was Aladar, who was, like Affirmed, a descendant of the great native dancer. In their first meeting, Aladar, trained by the renowned John Veach, was the convincing victor, besting affirmed by three and a half lengths. The greatest rivalry in modern thoroughbred racing had begun. Back in Florida, Barrera was ready to make another change in personnel. Barrera had chosen a new jockey for affirmed, he was a native Kentuckian in the process of compiling the year's best winning record. An accomplished rider 
who would soon be on the cover of Sports Illustrated as Sportsman of the Year. His name was Steve Cawthon, and he had just turned 17. The two young athletes began their partnership with a win at Saratoga Sanford Stakes, and then 10 days later came the rematch with Aladar. This time, it was a firm who crossed the finish line first, leading by half a length. During the rest of the 1977 campaign, these two great horses would battle time and time again. You could look at the hopeful, you could look at the law fraternity, or you could Belmont, you could look at three or four or five or six races, and you don't know when or where they took place because uh, Ali Dar was always at his, at his neck. On a muddy track at the Champagne Stakes, a confident affirm takes the lead toying with an overmatched Darby Creek Road, only to be surprised by the hard-charging Aladar, who goes on to snatch the victory. It's affirmed to hit Darby Creek Road, and Aladar's coming at him, and it's Aladar on the outside who has a head in front. In the end, the championship for two-year-olds will be decided at the Laurel Futurity. The Laurel Futurity was the last race, big race for the two-year-olds that year. And last says, we're gonna go right to Laurel, he challenged John Veach. Veach took him on, and they ran the Laurel Fraternity, and the firm beat him again. It's a two-horse race in which the lead will change a dozen times. They come on down, approaching the 16th pole. It's affirmed on the outside along the rail. It's Alidar. They battle head and head. A 16th of a mile to go. Affirmed on the outside by a neck. Alidar along the rail. Coming on down the finish. Affirmed on the outside in front. And at the wire, it's affirmed. At the end of the racing season in the East, Aladar goes to Florida, but affirmed heads west to California. In both camps, thoughts were turning to next year and the Kentucky Derby, the first race of the Triple Crown. He was two-year-old champion, and, you know, of course, you're thinking three-year-old, you're thinking derby, you're thinking, you know, triple crown races to come up in front of you and uh, and we parted we went to California which is where Laz would be for the winter and Ali Dar went went to Hialeah and 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 trained in the east that winter Aladar runs up a string of impressive victories but in California unseasonable rains cut into a firm's training some said the champion was getting lazy but Patrice Wolfson had her own interpretation we had a very rainy season at, in California that spring of 1978. It rained and it rained, probably to the benefit of Affirmed, because it gave him a chance to develop and to grow. And he didn't really need much training. He was really a, just a natural athlete. As the Derby approaches, young Cawthon is forging a unique relationship with Affirmed. Do different horses require different kinds of communication? I mean, are you tougher on some horses? Sure. What kind of a horse is affirmed? He's a very nice horse. He, uh, he responds just, you know, more or less to your hands a lot. You know, I don't usually... The only time I hit him is when he's in front by himself. Then he tends to, you know, kind of relax and scalp along, and you got to keep his mind on his business. Um, Otherwise, he's his game, you know, he really digs in and, and does whatever you ask him. Affirmed has indeed had a dazzling career, but the real challenges lie ahead, and his old nemesis, Aladar, is waiting. Already, and they're up! And on the inside, there goes Raymond Earl, and Affirmed is right there in challenging the so walking in the paddock for the derby, Cawthon is as quiet, as well-behaved, you know, when I say well-behaved, meaning as, as professional. The horse walking around is so quiet. My husband, uh, nothing, nothing bothered him. He laughs, excitable. Patricia, she is, I can't talk because I was so nervous. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, I just felt this was destiny. Something was happening here. And I was loving every minute of it. They're in the final furlong. 
It's a burn with Stevie Calton showing the way by two and a half. Believe it with Ed Maple, he's next on the outside. Eladar is third, but it's going to be a burn with Steve Calton is going to win this 104th running of the Kentucky Derby. Eladar is second. Eladar had waited too long to challenge a firm. Lost by a length and a half. It would be a firm's last easy victory over his arch rival. As the Preakness, the second leg of the Triple Crown, approaches, Cawthon and Barrera strategize. They remember how Aladar vanquished a firm with a late charge in the Champagne Stakes the year before. In the week before the Preakness, Aladar's trainer, John Veach, puts his horse through an exceptionally fast six furlong workout. But affirmed seems to have nothing to prove. And they're off. They break away. Indigo Star on the outside takes the lead. Affirmed coming on down. As he often has, affirmed takes an early lead. They race on to the half mile pole. It's affirmed showing the way. On the outside, noontime spender. Right there, believe it, in third place. Alidar rushes up on the outside. They've got three-eighths of a mile to run. But this time, Aladar isn't waiting. At the far turn, he makes his move. He leaves Believe It behind and closes on the leader, gaining with each stride down the stretch. Two lengths, then one, then a neck. But Aladar has lost time moving around the pack and affirmed holds him off. At him. Coming on to the 16th pole, it's affirmed. Alidar on the outside. They come on down to the finish. Affirmed and Alidar. Here's the finish. With the second victory, the Triple Crown is within reach. Only 10 horses in history have achieved the honor. By now, Affirmed and Aladar have raced each other for a total of almost eight miles. And over all that distance, they're separated by just three lengths. It was here at Belmont Park that Affirmed ran his first race and recorded his first victory. The narrow two-year-old Colt is now a powerful three-year-old facing the biggest challenge of his life. Other pretenders to the throne have gone. Just five horses up the Belmont field. Affirmed is the favorite, with Aladar close behind in the betting. At a mile and a half with broad turns, the Belmont is the longest race in the Triple Crown. And some think that George Velasquez on Aladar, so close in the Preakness, will have room to win today. Meanwhile, the stakes are highest for Affirmed, whose team knows all too well how difficult it is to win a Triple Crown. It was a ton of pressure that last three weeks was, you know, uh, mind-boggling. Uh, just knowing that you were, you know, being watched uh, by so many uh, with uh, so much at stake. And they're up. That's a firm going out for the lead. Then Judge it's hard to really explain everything that was going on through my mind in that split second. I think it's probably like when they say you, your life flashes before you. It kind of felt like that. On the inside, affirmed. On the outside, Alidar. And those two are letting out all stops. They're going on out together. Affirmed along the inside. Alidar on the outside. Heads apart as they move down the back stretch. I didn't know unaffirmed. I, I had feelings about it. You know, it'll be down the stretch before anybody really knows if he can if he can get the distance and if he's got the heart and the guts and everything that he needs to be you know a triple crown winner. Cawthon does not have long to wait. The two are heads apart. Nalidar has got a lead. Nalidar put ahead in front, right in the middle of the stretch. Cawthon, for the first time, switched his whip and hit him left-handed. He had never hit him left-handed before. And a firm took off. A firm to Alidar, heads apart. A firm's got a nose in front as they come on to the wire. At the finish, it's going to be dead tight. A firm running towards the crowd. Alidar is second. Steve Calvin salutes the crowd. And then, of course, past the finish is one of my favorite pictures of all time, was with Cawthon puts his whip way up in the air. I have won a lot of races on a lot of great horses for a lot of uh, wonderful people. But I've never had a feeling like I did when I crossed the finish line in the Belmont Stakes in 1978. I just, it's as good as it gets. Affirmed won the Eclipse Award for Horse of the Year in 1978. And after a stellar four-year-old career, 
won the same honor in 1979. Uh, of all the horses that I rode, Afrin was the best. Not only was he um, thin, but he was a fighter, and to me, the smarter horse that I ever knew. He ended his racing life as he had begun it in the winter circle at Belmont Park. Since then, hundreds of great thoroughbreds have come and gone, but none have equaled the achievements of Affirmed. What I really would like people to remember most about Affirmed is that he had three championship years he raced. Each one was entirely different. He's remembered for his triple crown races with Ali Dar and his, his tenacity and his, his will to win in his heart. But I also like to think that he'll be remembered for his endurance, his, his stamina, his, um, you could do anything with him. He won going short, he won going long. He won going off the pace, coming off the pace, going to the lead. He was very versatile and he was very gentle and he was very kind. And I think that he was, he was just a, a one of a kind. A very, very special thoroughbred that will, that his memory should go on and on and on. Having won the greatest accolades racing can bestow, a firm retired to stand at stud until his death at the age of 26. He was laid to rest in the colors of the Harborview Farm, where he was raised and trained. Today, his admirers still come to pay their respects. New generations of thoroughbreds will come and go, and new chapters in the history of thoroughbred racing will be written. But no page in that history will shine more brightly than the one that bears the name Affirmed.